I've never been a big fan of guacamole, and from what I can recall throughout my life, I've never been involved in melee combat. But hey, those last two sentences are semi-relevant to Guacamele, the latest PS3 and Vita game from Drinkbox Studios. Imagine this, you're a young man, you have a love interest, she gets kidnapped, you have to go rescue her, a scenario we've all played before at one time or another. But rest assured, Guacamele is one hell of a fun adventure. You play Juan, an aspiring luchador casually working on an agave farm. Right as you're about to visit El Presidente's daughter, she gets kidnapped by Carlos Calaca. Mr. Kalaka plans to use her for ritual purposes to further advance his powers and ultimately rule the land of the living and dead. Without much trouble, Kalaka kills Juan, but in the land of the dead, Juan has bestowed a magical luchador mask that gives him the skill he needs to fight back. This is where your adventure starts. Guacamele is essentially a 2D open world action game. Maps and areas are separated, but it's all there to explore with very minimal loading. On your adventure, you'll be fighting skeletons, chupacabras, and dead armadillos. What's really great about Guacamele is the combat. It's accessible, yet surprisingly deep. As you slowly progress through the game, new moves are gradually taught to you. These moves are required to break enemy shields and barriers throughout the game. They're also color-coordinated, so your green-colored ground slam can only break green shields, for example. With this in mind, everything was easy to remember and really encouraged varied moves. Topple this with your present punches, jumps, and throws, and you've got an easy-to-use, deep move set. The world of Guacamele isn't just about luchadoring. Platforming plays a key role, and it's awesome here. Later on in the game, you'll be granted the ability to switch between worlds. You'll be able to swap between the land of the living and the land of the dead, on the fly. The differences between these worlds is sometimes subtle and most times helpful. The Land of the Dead may have a platform you need, but only reachable by jumping from a platform from the Land of the Living. Leaping off and switching between worlds mid-jump will help you get to where you need to go. This is just a small example, because this mechanic creates really challenging platforming. Aside from this, you'll also get to turn into a chicken whenever you want to. Yet another addition to the platforming and exploration. Speaking of exploration, Guacamele has a world just begging to be explored. There's many hidden areas that will contain valuable chests. These areas will require some crazy challenging platforming. It feels so rewarding after the 50th try. There's a lot of areas you can't get to right away though, so it's worth backtracking with new powers to find more chests. Chests in turn will give you health or meter upgrades, sometimes cash, which you can later spend for more upgrades. Did I mention this game looks beautiful? Because it is. Animation is without a doubt fantastic. All the environments are rich with color and personality. The soundtrack is great too. It's like Mexican, techno, jumping hotness. I can't describe it, but it goes so well with the game. One thing I have to mention is just how funny Guacamele is. This game has tons of memes, homages, and jokes left and right. Seeing Grumpy Cat and Castle Crasher posters was awesome. And I definitely don't want to spoil the rest of the fun, but know you'll get a kick out of what you find in this game. Whether you're playing on PS3 or Vita, the same game is here. For owners of both systems, this is another excellent game that encompasses Sony's cross-service. Guacamele is cross-buy, cross-save, and cross-controller. Uploading and downloading your cloud saves works flawlessly, and as always, one purchase nets you both games. Cross Controller works great here too, allowing the Vita to be the controller for the PS3 while also displaying the game's map on the Vita's screen. Just a little pro tip, for some reason the game doesn't natively support Cross Controller. In order to get it to work, start the game on PS3 and use Remote Play on Vita normally. Hit Connect via Private Network and it'll connect. From there, the Vita acts as Player 2 rather than Player 1. Simply hold the PlayStation button to change the DualShock to Player 2, making the Vita Player 1. I'm not sure why they made Cross Controller such a hassle, but you can do it this way. With that said, it's worth noting that co-op is present, and if you don't have a second DualShock, your Vita can be Player 2 like I just mentioned. My only real complaint with Guacamelee is its odd pacing and difficulty spikes. There are a few moments where you might get overly frustrated with the absurd enemies and bosses, which can oftentimes be overwhelming just for the sake of being overwhelming. It's annoying, sure, but it's a minor scratch on this fine package. I had a blast playing Guacamelee. I was fighting cactuses, I laughed a lot, and I worked non-stop to reach a chest for a third of a heart to reach a new health increase. I spent 8 hours completing the campaign to 100% and I jumped right into the hard mode. Guacamelee can really hook you. My advice is, give it a chance to hook you too. Juan can't save the princess by himself.